Well, we've got a bit of a snowy day. First blizzard warning in a few years, so I'm gonna enjoy this downtime. And a little bit of sled maintenance. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna replace on that shock right there. The last ride I went on, it froze and would not come back, which is not a good way to start the season. So we're going to fix on that. Get a brandy spanking new one, thank y'all. I'm gonna do these and just replace the bushing. Oh yeah, so I got some rubbers, some steel bushing center. KYB from Skidoo. We'll pull the old one out, compare the two, and see how much wear we've gotten on the old one in 4,300 miles. I'll take a look. Right, so the first thing we have to do, we can take off this front idler wheel. And you could do it with power tools, but I don't really have anything else going on, so just use a T-handle and a regular old ratchet. And not ratchet, a wrench, rather. So these ones are pretty easy. Fairly small bolt for this front idle wheel, and I always like to put my nut and bolt together so I don't lose it. And the reason we got to take this guy off is because the bolt for that front shock there. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Right, so now we've got both idlers off. We need to attack that guy right there. So one thing that kind of annoys me about Skidoo a little bit, Bombardier in general I suppose, is the choice of their sizing when it comes to nuts and bolts. It's pretty minor. If you ever worked on a Toyota or a Honda or just about any other Japanese manufacturer. They all like a certain size metric fasteners. They use a 17 or a 14 or a 12 or a 10 or an 8 for the wrench. And Bombardier likes to use 15, 16, 13, sometimes 17, I guess it depends. Small gripe, but gotta complain about something. What's the point of being happy all the time anyways? So... Here we go. There's that. And this one I'll just set off to the side. And then once we get the top bolt out, it'll just slide right out of there. Probably should say this is made so much easier by putting the sled up on a lift, having a nice hoist, lift the back end, beats kneeling on the ground on a day where the high temperature is like, oh, I don't know, nine degrees. It doesn't matter if it's Fahrenheit or Celsius, that's just cold. Hey, look at that. And there we go. Scoop that little spacer. Take that out. Look at all the ice. Actually, I've already had this out once and I had to put it back together because I want to go ice fishing. And uh, it's just 
better to ride a snowmobile when you race fishing than it is to drag a jet sled full of stuff around. Another thing I noticed with this shock is she get a little wear. I'm gonna say I don't think is factory. Take this over to the new one. Oh, wait, it looks like this just been worn on. By lifting a hoist, coming back to that. I mean, like, like proper lift. This really neat hoists trolley setup. Yeah, I used to work with, hooked me up with. Can't remember what it was used for, something with a radio antenna, but that old trolley right there just slides back and forth. Just making it better. Alright, here we go. We're gonna let that baby thaw out by the wood stove for a few minutes. And then we'll come back, we'll put her on the bench, and tear it apart, put some new bushings in, and reverse the process. Alright, so the most important thing when you're working on something like, oh this, or I suppose anything, is to make sure you have a perfectly clean workspace. So you know, I got that. So now we've set the shock up in the vise. It's the easiest way to hold it. I don't really care about damaging those bushings. Um, even if I did, the vise really doesn't hurt it as long as you don't hammer on it. So the only thing that I need from this is I need obviously that spring, that retainer there, that spring, and then that business on the end. Those couple of lock rings. Then you need that little red guy right there because it looks cool. And uh, that didn't come with one, but also looks cool. So, forgive my, I don't have a great way to film this, but there it is. So what you gotta do, I've counted the threads on this so that we can get our preload pretty close. Uh, I don't run a ton of preload on the front of these anyways. It depends on what you want for ski pressure and all the rest of it, but I have it set pretty much where it came when I bought it here a few years ago, which is, I don't know where it is, I guess. So anyways, that's nine threads down from uh, where they start at the body uh, to where the this nut was. So I'll just back this off. And I'll back it off until I can get that out without having to struggle too much. Just spring that down, pop that up, pop it out, and we'll set it there. Perfectly clean work surface. Set the spring next to it. I like to set these in order as well so I know how they came off. Not that there's a lot of parts here, but it's a good practice to get into so you don't forget where your stuff goes. And then that's all I need from that. Uh, you can see a little bit of black tape that I've got here, some extra wide electrical tape. Comes in handy for many things and I like I said I've had this out before once I put it back together so I could go sledding uh, ice fishing rather not snowmobiling ice fishing and um, the reasons that I am replacing this shock rather than having it rebuilt should become apparent the body here is it's pretty well beat um, I'm not sure how well that's gonna come across on camera but you can see it's scarred up right there and if you look at it just right you can actually kind of see it's kind of a a divot in the body of the shock right in here kind of like I said it's it's kind of difficult to see but you get the idea and uh, I'm gonna take it out I'm not gonna have it sent out and rebuilt because I have to replace the body anyways and by the time I do that it's gonna be probably March or May before I get the dang thing back there's not much snow around here in May uh, there's actually no snow around here in May so I want to ride now so now we're going to get this guy out, and I'm going to use my two and a half mil. Look at that. Sorry, i got to hold things so I don't lose my clicker position. Not that that matters, but I probably should count it. 
before I take this red knob off so I can set the new one the same as the old one for maximum handling and so this little guy boy it feels like she'd get some Loctite or something on it because it just it's just a tight fit there we go so what we'll do that's that's got a as you can see it's uh kind of has a, a little flat machined into it that corresponds to flats in there so we know that'll fit and turn the clicker versus uh just spinning when it gets frozen which it uh will so we'll count i suppose we'll go from full soft so just count the clicks one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen all right so that's 15 out from full soft so that's what we'll set the new one look at that just coming down snowing so hard it's coming in the door probably wouldn't come in the door so much but I accidentally hit the edge with my tractor now you can see outside and it's hey well it's snowing in here means great So here's the new one, shiny, and we were 15 from full soft, so that's what we'll do. I'm not sure where this thing comes set up from, so we'll back it off to full soft and then uh, count up to 15 clicks out. Well, that was 13, so we were pretty close. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Beautiful. And now, let's tighten her back up. There's not a lot to it. Let's see if we can, whoops. Oh, it's pretty difficult to. be a guy on YouTube, like a pro, like a pro YouTuber. I don't know how they do it. Probably with a, like a tripod or something, probably. Maybe someday. Alright, so enjoy that picture of the DeWalt thing I took off a table saw, or a chop saw. It's the only thing worth saving on that chop saw is that DeWalt sign right there. Yeah, she was just needed everything so we got a one-way trip to the dumpster look at that factory new so now we're gonna put all of our spring parts in so before what I was saying is try to put them in order of how they came off so the first thing that goes on is this then this then this then that I said it's when you when you don't have a lot of parts it really doesn't make a huge difference I'm, I'm sure I could remember well I don't know but I probably couldn't remember because it's four things and the memory of a goldfish but uh, if you've got something that has like a bunch of parts like the next project here which is obviously very carefully laid in order everything is perfectly arranged uh, so that somebody could probably remember it. Me? Well, who knows. Anyhow, it's good practice to start putting stuff in order, so that way you remember how it goes. So, we will do spring. Cup. Spring. 
that thing. And that just slides like that. And then we tension. Just screw that back to where it goes. And a good way to do this would have been to put like a mark on the threads where I wanted it to stop. But I couldn't find a Sharpie or a paint marker and I didn't want to go inside because uh, it's snowing. It's not a bad, uh, I mean, it's not a good ex excuse to not go inside, but you know, I mean, any excuse to just sit out in the shop in front of the fire, really. Uh, all right, so that's pretty much what that will look like. And I will press in the lower bushings next. Um, it's actually really easy for the lower bushings because it's push in. It's pretty simple. So what we'll do, or upper bushings rather, I said lower. I meant upper, obviously. And so what we do is you have these bushings here. And a uh, very, very complicated procedure. You push them in like that. And this is where it gets crazy. You just do the same thing on the other side. Push them in. Brandy new. And then we've got our steel bushing that goes there. I like to put a little bit of grease on them if I can. I bought this thing of grease when I worked at the motorcycle shop years ago. Probably had it going on. I don't know, 15 years maybe. I don't know, it's been a while. And uh, still a decent amount left. I don't know. Probably not really necessary, but find anything to help stuff like this from rusting. It's not stainless. It's got a little bit of a, I don't know, some kind of zinc or other magical coating on it, but it doesn't keep them from rusting. And eventually, probably 20 years from now, when somebody else owns this sled and sells it on Craigslist for. $48,000, um, judging by what stuff is going for now. They'll have a nice clean bushing that's not rusted, and that'll probably be the only thing on the sled that's not hammered. Uh, but, uh, you know, that doesn't really stop guys on Marketplace from just wanting the money. So again, this one, you can press it in. Probably would have been smarter to use the vise. I got it started anyways, relatively square. Put it up in the vise. Press it in. It's pretty even. Probably just a little bit of a push there wouldn't hurt. It's not bad. And we'll use the right tool to make sure we get it in, which is working exactly as well as you would think, uh, which is perfectly. And that's pretty much that. There isn't much to it. The bottom bushing will be a little bit more difficult, uh, first of all, because I don't know where I put it, which tends to make things really difficult, but also because it's got a um, lip. Let's see if we can find it together. This is going great. How come it took you 10 hours to put that shock in? Oh, no reason. Are you under here? Uh, how about over here? Are you over there? Are you on the ground? Where'd you go? Well, we'll find it. Maybe not together. But we'll find it. <laughs> 